fighting desperately to keep the performance space on the 11th Street lot between A and B alive and thriving. Not only, pro not only protesting for the artists, but also for the homeless. She finds she thinks that it's incredibly vital to the artistic community and uh, New York in large. And he's struggling to find this one song before he dies. This one great thing that he can leave on this earth, um, except he finds it in the place he least expected it. Mimi. Yeah, I mean, everybody, I feel like, obviously wants to find some comfort somewhere. And she's obviously dealing with a lot of things that don't... She, of course, she wants to find a, a safe place. For me, Mimi was a fragile um, girl who also held her own. And I felt like, of course, I want to be that girl who can, who can be like that. And I had it inside, and she allows me to portray that. So I take full advantage of letting go and just opening up those inner, like, inner insecurities that you have. She kind of puts it out there and it's like, hey, this is me take it or leave it. She's a feminist and um, you know she's a civil rights activist and a women's rights activist. You know she's fighting for the, the little people in a way I guess and I think she comes from such a privileged background so for her to want to do to devote her life to that I think is is an important thing. Well, Collins is is a lover absolutely um, and although he doesn't get into much confrontation uh, within the show, he is very, he's very much a fighter as well. He, uh, he's an anarchist, he ran through the Parthenon naked. He, uh, you know, he, he's not, he's not afraid to do something meaningful with the time he has left. He knows time is limited and he's not going to take any moment for granted. Um, and just do you, have fun, you know. Um, Angel is eccentric, happy, loving, you know, he lives every day as if it were his last. So when you go on that stage, make sure you have that mentality. Um, it says in the script and in the songs that we've been planning since college, you know, these days that we've realized that we live together, that we wanted to start a, a studio together where we can make music, where I could help, you know, Mark with his films and all this kind of stuff. And I could, you know, be the guy that helps him build this place up so we can have this kind of empire and really make the kind of stuff that we want to create. And therefore, like, you know, buying their building and acquiring such, you know, great wealth and things like that, to me as an actor or to me as a person, it seems very plausible. Like. Everybody wants to do well. Everybody wants to have wealth and, you know, help their friends out and do this kind of thing. So the advice I would give is don't, don't try to put on, a lot of people do it by putting on the character of being, you know, this arrogant, pricky kind of, you don't have to play that. You all, all you have to do is just realize what this guy wants and how he goes about it. Like he's this ultra cool, sexy, but very established and well off guy who is asking for the rent money, just like your landlord would ask you for your rent money. So just realize what it is he wants and be honest about what, what it is that you're going for. And then therefore you get so much more fulfillment at the end when you realize that what you've wanted is the problem. And then at the end of the, the show that, you gotta, that you've had nothing but this money and wealth and now you need the love. Now you need your, your life to be filled with friendship and family and things like that. So now you can help, really help them in that realm. So. In terms of each individual character, I've done research on what it's like to be homeless, um, what it's like to be a woman and be homeless. Um, because I'm, fr I'm from Tucson, Arizona, so I did a lot of work with outreaching with teens and, and with women who are in shelters and stuff. So I've gotten to see firsthand what that's not like. And the cool thing about that is that um, instead of making these women caricatures, um, you get to bring kind of an honesty to that. And it's the same thing with Mrs. Jefferson. What is it like to be a woman of power um, who's going to be a judge and uh, someone who's going to be um, a, a woman of color, too, who's going to take that position? And my father got his Juris Doctorate, so I got to see a little bit of that and kind of take from his life what that was like to be a black man during that time, during the 80s and 90s, you know, in that kind of position and how it is very different from today and bring truth to that, too. So it's very cool. It's very, it's a hard process, but it's so fun getting to figure those things out. All the, all the characters, most of them are trying to pursue something with their lives. They're all you know, searching for their goals and kind of trying to attain what they want out of life. And what's strange about it is that at the same time, they're also, a lot of them are fighting the clock of when their life is going to run out. And anybody who's is playing Roger or Mimi or, or Collins or Angel or anybody with HIV um, should always remember that 
these people didn't know when they were going to die and that's the message of, of no day but today. Uh, I know I have a friend now that just turned was HIV positive and that means that he'll live probably like 60 more years. They didn't, that didn't mean that then. It meant maybe half a year. So the, so the, the, the need, the, the stakes were bigger then. And that's important to feed the pressure of the play to figure out what my life is about. Why are we here? Why are we in these moments? I think that's important about the play. Um, also, that it's in New York City, a bunch of people who, like, um, I, don't know, I know that uh, pe people used to come to New York to get away from whatever they were in or, or at or what they were going through in their hometown. So New York is like a, a big pot of, of people who were trying to find themselves and, and I want to wear this today or I don't want to wear anything today. Like, so it was like this, that point of, like, of New York at that time was such a cluster of art and, and figuring ourselves out and pressure and that's all before the play begins. It, there's so many parts in the show that you put yourself in such a vulnerable position and you're almost naked on stage and I happen to love the lineup of Seasons of Love because you step up to the plate and you basically just undress yourself in front of the audience and give everything of yourself to, to anyone that's listening or willing to be there or not willing to be there or who wants to listen or who doesn't because I'm gonna say it anyways so anyone that that is interested in rent or you know chooses to go into learning anything be ready to step up to the plate and give all of yourself and I think that that's really an important thing because you learn more about yourself and you learn more about how to share yourself with others and, and learn how to love that way.